Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here on the Corn School, uh, joined today by uh, Ken Curra from BASF. Uh, yeah. Always great to have you on the show. Absolutely. Glad to be here. Let's talk a little bit about corn fungicides. Mm -hmm. It's a few weeks away, but no, uh, no better time to talk about it now. Talk about this season, Ken. We've had a wide planting window yeah, here, plants yeah. planting all over the place. What is a, what's the fungicide season look like going forward this year? Yeah, you know, with the exception of Eastern Ontario and Quebec, who for the most part had that beautiful 10, 14 day run to, to put corn and soys in and, and away you go, Bob's your uncle, the crops in, right? Most of Ontario, we, uh, you know, we had ourselves a five or six week corn planting season. It was very regional to certain concessions even or parts of townships where people could work and then other areas just a little bit too wet, really spotty rains and man, wide open planting window. Mm -hmm. uh, so it could make for a wide fungicide season as well. Brings a lot of questions into the picture. Um, you know, I'm happy with how the crop looks right now. I've yep. always said as an agronomist, give me three dry weeks in June. Yep. Just wonderful for a crop, especially corn, makes it dig its heels in and, and get roots driven down, really sets it up to manage a lot of stress, much better for the rest of the year. Corn crop, you know, this is a beautiful stand of V8 corn we're standing in right now. Uh, that corn crop can handle a lot of stress between now and tassel in these next three, four weeks. Uh, we need two, three rains to finish it around that time and then afterwards the end of the season. So my key message to growers, you know, yeah, we've been a little bit dry these last two, three weeks. Pretty good for your crops. I know the clay guys trying to establish soybean stands will kind of condemn me for that statement, but we'll figure that problem out later. Uh, you know, our corn, our corn crop is set up pretty nicely. Um, you know, let's protect some yield. And there's a lesson in here based on 2016, you know, wicked dry year right up until that tassel stage. Mm -hmm. And that, that took a lot of growers out of the fungicide pitcher, decided to, you know, watch pennies or just, you know, the yield potential, that kind of magic 170 to 180 bushel benchmark that we talk about at BSF in terms of fungicide mm -hmm. application. There were some doubts on that. Uh, you know, I always say never give up on a well-managed grass crop like corn or wheat. They just seem, if you manage them, they respond for you more often than not. So we have a lot to talk about in fungicide this year. We've been using fungicides for 10 years now. I mean, the math has been done. You know, what's the payback? What's the ROI? Yeah, from, our, from a BSF perspective, we see that positive ROI occur in about 80% or better of fields, um, you know, with one of our strobilion fungicides. Uh, that's generally at the tassel stage. So VT stage, first tassel to full tassel is really what we promote. So, uh, you know, well-managed corn, fungicide really fits in, as we say about all well-managed crops. Mm. Hey, let's talk about timing. Um, mm. We've got to get out in the uh, fields, got to do some scouting. We got a Western bean cutworm to consider. A lot of considerations. Talk about timing. Yeah, there's a lot going on now in, in uh, tassel stage corn, right? We talk about the strobilion fungicides for that plant health disease suppression and and protecting yield, right? Mm. We talk about fungicides protecting yield. They're not some magic juice that creates more yield. They protect the potential you've already laid down in, in you know, a nice looking corn crop, you know, V8 stage corn crop, like the one we're standing in. Now you bring the group three fungicides, the azoles into the picture for vomitoxin and dawn reduction in corn. And then the third purpose, uh, you know, the insecticide pass for Western mean cutworms should, should pressure merit it. So there's a lot going on and mm -hmm. tends to be a little bit of confusion at that stage on how all those management options fit together. Mm -hmm. So from a timing perspective, how do we fit them together? What do we consider? Yep. So first of all, the, the on pass, so any of those fungicides, you know, best timing really is from first tassel to mm -hmm. full tassel. Pretty wide window, right? Now we pin it down to the Western Bean Cutworm Pass. We look at Tracy Bowdy's information. You know, Tracy's done a great job of putting together the scouting regimen and, and developing thresholds for Western Bean Cutworm. Uh, you know, so once those thresholds are met, uh, application to the silks. So we don't want to see application of insecticide prior to silking. Because even though the moth traps may be high, the, the, the moth trap counts mm -hmm. may be high, traps are full, lots of moss in the field. And even if you find egg masses over threshold, if that corn hasn't tasseled yet and there's no silks, let those eggs hatch. Those larvae have nothing to feed on. They starve to death. It's, they feed on pollen first and move to the silks to feed on the silk. So timing fits in to that window, but also overlaps the group three application window with products like Caramba or Proline, the Azols, for dawn reduction. So those two purposes fit together and they fit into the wider window of first tassel to full tassel for the strobilion fungicides. Let's talk about multiple modes of action. This conversation we have in herbicides all the time, yes. but that's becoming a part of the fungicide conversation. We have to have that conversation in fungicides. You know, we've, we've seen the pitfalls of, of relying on single mode of action, 
in the same field or in the same management system year after year when it comes to herbicide resistance and weed control. We need to talk about that in fungicides now. Uh, you know, we have resistance to the strobilion fungicides in Missouri and in, uh, in frog eye leaf spot and soybean, I believe. So it's a worthwhile conversation. Really important to pick fungicide products that contain multiple modes of action and not just multiple modes of action, but as we like to say, multiple modes of effective action on the disease you're targeting. If it has multiple modes of action, great. But if it only has one mode of action for a specific disease like northern corn leaf blight that you're targeting, that's an issue. Uh, really important to, to throw multiple modes of action at a disease or pest population in the same year. Uh, if you've been using a singular mode of action product year after year in your system, probably best to look at something else and, and, and throw a different mode of effective action at the pests in those fields before you encounter some trouble. Final question for you and that is, you know, getting out there, doing some scouting, figuring out what diseases you have so you can yeah. decide to what to put in that tank. How important is that, you know, as I say, identifying the disease pressure you have? Yeah, so primary diseases we're looking to control in Ontario, northern corn leaf blight's mm -hmm. a big one. We talk about that a lot. And, you know, that really delineates the, the strobilion fungicides in terms of performance as their effectiveness on northern corn leaf blight. And then we bring in uh, gray leaf spot and eye spot, you know, a couple of pretty important diseases too because they, they remove that photosynthetic area from those top leaves that drive the metabolism of the plant and build yield, right? Those are the primary ones. And thracnose leaf blight comes into that, certainly in the, in the dry bean growing areas. There's a lot of that around and there's some hybrid sensitivity in, in that one as well. And uh, then we look to some of the more secondary diseases like a common rust, you know, it's, it's here, you can find it. Uh, not a huge yield robber, generally a pretty easy mm -hmm. one to control because most of the fungicides catch it. So really targeting northern corn leaf blight is the primary one and, and throwing multiple modes of effective action at, at that particular disease to try to you know, protect the plant, minimize disease pressure and drive yield.